This is a message to all viewers, all listeners. As I said before, there will be stories on this channel that may be offensive to some. That may be harsh to some. That may be a little bit hurtful to some. And some people are forced to relive these stories in their mind when they don't want to. So let's just keep in mind that when we put these stories together, we're not on here trying to glorify anything. We're not on here trying to glamorize the criminal lifestyle. We're on here documenting actual history and giving people the opportunity to explain to the world how their life went astray and they ended up going down the wrong path. So once again, let's be respectful and let's learn something. He said, nah, man, you getting, them, you getting that shit from that dude right there bottled up already and touched up, you losing. This is how you make the money. I'm like, what are we gonna do with that? I go, we chef this, we cook this. I don't know how to do that, but it taught me. He went in the kitchen, did some crazy shit, put that on the stove, boom, 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 some soda, some ice, blew that bitch. I, should, I was like, what the? F got hard as a rock, kid. I'm like, God, you know what I mean? You got something here, you know what I mean? We all from LG. You know, LG is a project of seven buildings, you know what I mean? It's not the biggest project, you know, you know, I got Marcy, got like 20 some buildings, Fort Green, got like, you know, 14, 15 buildings, you know, but seven buildings within like a one block radius from, you know, Lafayette and Franklin to, you know, Lafayette and Clarkson, one block, and we right there, but we got tall buildings, you know what I mean, 20 stories, you know, 15 stories, so if you break that down, that's, you know, it, it, it'll break down, because Marcy's what? Five stories, Fort Green is five, six stories. I didn't know y'all had 20 story buildings. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, got, we got three 20 story buildings, I believe. We got like a, two 15 stories and two 13 stories, something like that. You know what I mean? Or uh, you break it down to seven, you know, it's like it, it breaks down. But the three storm buildings, 433, which I was from, that's the back building. And you know, you got 456, which is on, on the decal side, which is 20 stories. Then you have the front building that represents first come to LG, 345. That was a 20 story. Then you got the little the little ones in between and you know, the 13, the littlest one I believe is like 13, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, we was, you know, we had a little, little, like a little village. That was a little village, you know what I mean? But, you know, not, I moved to LG when I was about, wow, in the 70s, bro, like around 70, 75, 76. Where you moved from? I moved from East New York. I was born in Pink House, East New York. Mm. And then from East New York, I was um, 1133 Stanley Avenue by the OTSS. You know, my, my two dudes know where that's at, by the dip and all that. Facts. You know, it was out there. And I had family that moved to LG. And then my mom, her sister lived there, my aunt. So my aunt, you know, my mom applied for it and she got it. And then we moved to LG in the early 70s. Me and my big brother, Ralph. Everybody know my brother, Ralph. <laughs> know so we was down there you know puerto ricans you know growing up and went to the hood you know best die and like you know we was like stand out puerto ricans a few puerto rican families in there but as time went on we was the ones that you know was outside you know hanging out you know and, and getting to know the bros you know and just meeting childhood friends that's what we were just kids man we was kids we was kids just out there doing what kids do you know playing bugging out doing things you know what kids do and basically after that, you know, not family moved down the hall, you know. He had a big family, a little big family moved in. But you know, he was young, he was younger than me. He was younger than me, but you could tell like, that was the one, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta watch this little boy, bad mother, you know I mean? You know, he was out, he was outside, you know, running around. And as we got older, got older, you started seeing like, he was like a, he wasn't a, he wasn't a, a follower, you could tell he was a leader, you know what I mean? You could tell he was gonna be a leader in whatever choices or decisions he made, or uh, whichever route he wanted to go, you feel me? Hmm. And, and, and his family, big family, the Davis family, you know, we lived next door. But, you know, I had my set of, my, my set of friends, 
me, as we got older now, we started with the basketball tournament. We had a great basketball tournament, Sullivan Smith Memorial Tournament in, in Brooklyn. Mm. Great tournament, great, great. Mad players come down, NBA players, you know, college players come down to play. Like it was a live tournament. You know, what live. type of NBA players was coming to that tournament? Man, we had we had Mo Scurry come down. Mo Scurry was down there. Mark Jackson came through, played in the tournament. You know, we had Will Be Free come down. We had Lloyd Daniels come down. And he played. We had Gerald Green. You know, that you know, he was in a um, college player. You know, up in Villanova, he played there. Mm. Good player. We had a lot of players, man. A lot of good high school players. Like high school coaches used to come down there, college and scout, scout players down there, you know. Then we had other, other, other teams from other hoods like NA Rock. They used to come down. They had a team. They had a nice team. NA Rock had a nice team, man. You know, they used to come down there. They had their own team. Then we had um, from up there by what is that? Um, by Delphi, I believe preteen, not preteen classic. Um, Sandra had a lead. And it was a, a lady named Sandra, if you know, back then. She had a team. She brought them down there. And they was up to by Delphi, by the Fort Greene area. Oh, man, they had a crew, too. Man, we, 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 I think it was Hoop Connection, if I'm not mistaken. And they would come down there. Like, other people would bring their teams down there to play in that tournament, you mm-hmm. know? And it was, like, live, like, 5 o'clock. Tate, it was a white boy. Tate coming down, playing. And we had no Avenue coming. My boy Bobby Cunningham. My boy Miami from NA Rock. He had a crew, man. What years was this like? 85, 86, 87. When, you know, LG was all love, bro. Like, that was a project that was love. Like, like you know, they come through. Then after the game, they don't even go home. You know how sometimes you come down there, you go to games, you break out. They stay, man. They come in the projects, come in the back, chill out. They would just hang out, you know? Like 86, 87, 88, chill out all night. Just doing what we do, you know, balling still, helping each other out, other kids ball. Like it was a lit tournament, man. It was a very real good. And since you get off the train, since you get off the that was like all rucker of, of, of like Harlem, you know what I mean? That was all rucker. That was the Brooklyn rucker, you know? And you get off that train on Carson Avenue, the five o'clock game, you rush into that game. Cause you hear the crowd like like you in the garden, bro. Like, ah, mumbling, kid. Kids in the trees, man. Like it was it was all love, you know? We was looking forward to seeing these dudes come down here, man. You know, you know, most scary. You know, come on, man. It was, it was love, man. It was, it was crazy love, you know. And we grew up at a at a good time, man. At a great time. That was a great era, man. You know what I mean? That was a great era. Looking back at it, that was a great era of my life. You know, growing up, and and we all had structures. You know, of you know, ball. Some people like we had a lot of DJs coming in from Mississippi for my project. Big Daddy King DJ. And he was helping kids doing music. So we had a lot of kids going different routes. And, you know, we all went the ball route. I'm sure every hood, every hood got that story, you know, playing basketball and doing this and that. It was all good. We were just growing up. Young kids just growing up in our environment, you know, just finding things to do. Because there wasn't much to do. So we find things to do. We made it fun. We made it night playing manhunt at night and doing all that good shit. You know, things that kids do, you know? Mm. And, we, and, you know, we just was all up from the front to the back now. Now, you know, we got seven buildings now. We was in the back, but from the front to the back, it was all love. You know, it wasn't like some part, we don't mess with them dudes in the front. We don't mess with them dudes in the middle. Now, it was all love, man. It was LG love, man. You know, that's what it was LG love. We used to have our little, our little jams back there. You know, our little um, night jams and LG day. It was lit. Everybody come down. North Street Avenue, East New York dudes come down, you know. God bless, you know what I mean? Everybody should come down. Like, was it dudes getting money in LG nah. at that time? Like, you had, you had, you had, you had the Hamilton brothers down there. They was doing their thing, and they had it on lock down there. And you know, they was, they had the projects good, the projects were safe. And this was, this was before crack, when it was just coke, right? Yeah, when Jr. When God bless Jr. Good dude, man. Like he, yeah, he, he had morals. You know, he knew the game. You know, he knew the game. He had. He had principles, he had respect, you know, he wasn't just no, you know, no, no, no joker just getting money, you know, because you can't move like that, you know, it won't last long. And he, he was a good dude, you know, he was a real good dude, and he kept the projects good, kept the young kids safe, you know, he was getting it. But now we're getting older now, you know, we're saying like, damn, you know, we're going to make this money. 
they pulling up in Jaguars and BMWs. That's what we see. You know, we sitting outside, we see that. Damn, the big cell phones back then. The hell, you know? And they used to get beeper calls and stuff. We used to ask the beepers for them. You know, that's how we make our money. We was hustling. We was young kids. What you mean? I used to run. I used to run to the payphone for them. Yeah, yeah. They used to give the big yo check this number. Who this calling for me? And we used to have a bunch of quarters. And we run to the payphone. Who this? Da da da. Yo, it's so and so. Who? If it's worth it, they'll come. They'll come over there. If not, I'll call them back. You know what I mean? But you know, it was like it was crazy. We had he had a say uh, his own payphone inside of four thirty three. That was the payphone. You know, nobody was getting on that phone or not. It was like it was like back of dollar, kid. <laughs> like a jack. <laughs> it was a jack, kid. Yeah, every every hood had one of those back in the days yeah, that the yeah. whole dudes be calling from Rikers Island to the payphone. Yeah, and it rings like I'm about to say it rings. Mm -hmm. So certain times you got to stay in my head, don't let nobody use this phone. I'm waiting for a phone call, and the phone call is coming like clockwork, you know. Crazy. Whether there was other activities going on, we was young, but you know, so be it. But now, as you know, as time get older, you know, we start like, man, you know, we want to, you know, we want part of the action, but you know. Uh, the respect that they have for our moms, like I said, they're respectful dudes, man, respectful guy. You know, he was like, respect for my moms and all that. Nah, man, you can't get out of here, man. Here, you go to Nazi or whatever. But like I said, my boy Nut was a little, you know, younger kid, you know. But he lived on my floor. That's how me and him got real tight. Because he's always come over my house. You know, when I used to, like, my moms and stuff, you know, like, we went to Catholic school. He didn't know he was in the projects. But we went to the Catholic school. There's a few of us in the projects that went to the Catholic school, Fort Green Catholic school. And me being one of them, me, my family, me and my brother, and World Wise and his family, and they had, they had, they had, they had I believe, like what, uh, what, like four brothers, a sister, maybe five of them, one and, and a girl, and they all went to Catholic school. You know what I mean? We was paying for that, you know. So. So they was in Catholic school, we was in Catholic school. So my mother, like, we was in private, my mother was not working, you know? But that was the gift and the curse because of her working out like that and going here, we had enough time in that house, you know? We was alone a lot, me and my brother. You know what I mean? So that gave us a lot of time. Like, some of these kids' mothers is home one day and whatever, whatever. But the, our house is the spot to be at, you know? Because my mom's this and that. We'll, we act like we go to school. We make a quick U turn and head back. My mom's they come home at 6 o'clock. We got all day in the house, you know? So my house is the spot to be. You know, we had all the games there, the session, you know, Atari games, ColecoVision, them days. And not used to always come by, you know, hang out with us, whatever. But one thing about him, he used to always drift off. And we were older cats, because he had a lot of uncles, you know? A lot of big uncles and stuff, you know? So he would be with older cats, and I'd be like, what's wrong with that dude, man? What's up with that dude? But they were schooling, bro, you know what I mean? Little do they know, they were schooling, bro, you know? And bro was laying it down the foundation for what made us the men that we are today, you know what I mean? Like, but we ain't know it yet. We ain't know it yet. Get dip off, come back, you know? Come back with money and shit, like, what the fuck? I'm telling you, man, fuck with me, fuck with me. I'm like, damn, nigga, all right. Then, you know, as time went on, he started knowing what he was doing. He started, you know, rubbing elbows with different dudes. And Nut was a fighter, like, you know, he was good with his hands. He was good with his hands, he was nice. You know, so, you know, a lot of dudes took up to him and he grew up fast, he grew up real fast. He manned up real quick. You know, but we still developing, he grew up. He manned up, you know? And the DFY bids, I never did all that. You know what I mean, he did DFY bids. And... Was y'all doing shit when he caught his DFY bid or he was out there doing shit on his own catching nah, DFY? But he caught his DFY, but he was doing dumb stuff, snatching chains, you know? Bob people beating people up, catching stupid charges. Not really. We wasn't messing with each other then. This we, was like when he was like what, thirteen? Yeah, thirteen, fourteen. You know, he was he was like I said, we was in different brackets. Me, I like I was with me, my man Sambo, my man Hedo, my man Jimbo. You know, we was in the back holding that down, you know? And we was just doing our little thing. And we met my man Moose. My man Big Moose put us on to a little game. You know, they had a they had a spot around the corner on Clifton Place. And they used to give us some little tops, you know, they started jingling, that's how you do this and do that. So we was like, alright. We was trying it, you know. What you mean? Y'all was y'all was dipping and dabbing with selling a little what this was this crack was out now? The crack ever yeah, the crack ever was out. It was this is like this was like 88, 87, 88, you know. Nut did a DFY bed, and when he did his little bed, we just started getting the game. Just, you know, little 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 vows. Dude was giving us little vows, you know. 
blessing us for a little while, a little packages here and there, a hundred packs and stuff like that. Take us three days to move it. You know, we ain't, we ain't just playing with it. You know, we ain't no, you know, just playing with it. And and Nut was came home off the DFY bed. And he had met this other cat in there. And when he came home, met some Brevoid dudes. And then he started hanging out in Brevoid. And then from Brevoid, he went to, you know, he met a few other cats and started dancing. Now then we're going to Midtown. Then we started doing the Midtown thing. And then Nut was just getting money. He was ahead of his time. Like he was just getting money and, and coming through. The first dude to come through with the with the with the MB5 125, freelance suits velour, you know, like coming through like ahead of the game, scooters, jewelry, like like you know, we get the little nugget watch or the little little red cat. He was different. You know, he was different. He was buying links and, and, and cables and you know, like you know, like he was a rapper or something, you know, so we like, damn, you know. But he was ahead of his time. And how old was he at that time? Now I had to be 15, 16, man. Running around with big chains on and running around with the um, velour sweatsuits on. Free lives. Free Where money. was he getting that type of style from? Like from. Yeah, but he got that style from my man Shaborn. My man Shaborn from 456, LG. Everybody knows Sha. My man Shaborn, he was a date sweet tea. You know? He was a date sweet tea. And he took nothing under his wing, you know? And, and showed him the game. You know, showed him the game, showed him style, and Shy used the way he dressed. You know, like, like the style. Like, you know, like son was wearing. Shy Born was wearing big ass Hercs and shit around him and all of that at that term. All that, all that, all that. Shy Born, Shy Born was that dude. Shy Born been that dude, always been that dude, still that dude. You know what I mean? The homie be home soon, but you know, he he schooled nut. He gave nut the blueprint, and then nut ran with it. You know what I mean? Nut ran with it. You know. Like, like he, he got around him, and when he was around him, you, know, you could be around a real dude, but some dudes don't know how to act around a real dude and don't take the blueprint. You know, a lot of people don't take the blueprint, you know, and that's the key to it, you know? Everybody just want to be like, you know, oh, uh, pay for this thing, I'm going to do my own thing, or, uh, you know, you know, uh, for whatever reason, they just don't, they just don't learn from the brother. They think they know it all. And he learned from Sha, and he learned and learned. And Sha had him around him for a while. That was like his little brother. Now, Shaw Boone bringing him around, Sweet T, he bringing him around with him, Queens cats, you know, Bimmy, and all these dudes. Now, young, young. He around them dudes in Queens and all them kids, and he seen what he seen. Now, he what? He got the taste for it. He got the taste for it. Then he came back to the hood, you know what I mean, with that drive. You know, started with the Midtown, started with this, and said, you know what? I'm not doing that. I'm not doing the Bobby's no more. Then Nut started going to Fort Greene. Like he was traveling around. Like we stayed at LG. We was out there. We'll, we'll go around and move around, but you know, LG was our, our, our home, you know what I mean? He'll go around. Nut started going to Fort Greene. Now he goes to Fort Greene and comes back and started messing with the homies, um, Corky and C D Caesar. The my two brothers from Fort Greene. You know what I mean? They was out there doing their thing, older guys. No, they, they, they black mix. or they Spanish? They Spanish. I believe they Spanish. They mix. They mm. mix. God bless. You know what I mean? And Corky was a cool dude. You know? Cool dude. You know? Cool dude. I got to know him after. Like, all these dudes I get, even though I was older than that, I got to know these dudes through nothing. Because as the time goes on, we kick it. I can tell you how the whole story, you know, evolved. You know, evolved. You know, it's all going to become one. But he got to... He got them dudes blessing him, you know? Now he's coming around with the joints and stuff like that. Now I'm like, yo, you know what I mean? He's coming around with, with, with white, you know what I mean? I'm like, what the fuck is this? And he said, nah, man, you getting, them, you getting that shit from that dude right there, bottled up already and touched up, you losing. This is how you make the money. I'm like, what are we gonna do with that? And like, yo, we chef this, we cook this. I don't know how to do that, but it taught me. He had, I'm telling you, he had, he had, he went in the kitchen, did some crazy shit, put that on the stove, boom, 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 some soda, some ice, blew that bitch. I said, I was like, what the? F got hard as a rock, kid. Yeah? I'm like, God, you know what I mean? You got something here, you know what I mean? They said, this is how we gotta do it now. So touching it up, everybody done, putting that twerk in. And God damn, yo, we just, we just take it off, you know what I mean? We just took off, you know what I mean? He was just like, yo, that's how we gonna do it. He just, you know, 
show me, he showed me. But I was getting stuff from homies, you know, just, you know, touched up already, you know, advised already, you know, get, getting the PC off or certain shit, you know. That ain't, that ain't it, you know, but when you young, whatever, but I'm just showing you where his head was at back then. You know, at first, at first we was coming in, we was coming in, we had, we had vowed. He went to see the homie, he went to see the homie CD in the, and cork and came in with a garbage bag full of vows, right? And we was getting it. We was, we was, we was offering it. You know what oh, I'm saying? So this was before, this was before he showed you, you saw him cook the shit up and all of that. Yeah, this is, yeah, before, so, I, I got before that. Before so that. at first they was hitting some with straight vows? Yeah, yes, vows. And you said vows. one day he just came in? Then one day he met, he met Porter Rock. Porter Rock is from, I think up there by, by, um, Brevoy. Uh, old school Porto Rock. People know who he is. You know, if you out there, BK, you know Porto. You know, old school Porto. Not from LG, not little Porto. OG Porto Rock, you know what I mean? He was out there. He took a liking to Nut. You know? And Nut started, had family. Uh, some, he met some triple A started going out of town. So, Nut money was up. And he went out of town and came back. He was doing with this kid named Porto. You know? And then, Porto, he'll go there and Porto would do his thing for him. He'd give him the bread and Porto would chef for him and I think he would pay Porto. And he'd be like, yo, you know, he seen Porto taking the extras. You know, I guess Porto was chefing and whatever extra Porto cup and give him what he paid for. He's like, nah, don't work like that. So, you know, show me how to do this. So Porto schooled him to the game and showed him how to whip. And that's how I learned not to know how to whip. He was like the whip master, kid, you know what I mean? It, it take a buck and make it to a 250 if you want it. Mm. You feel me? <laughs> you feel me? And now you're taking that out of town to Maryland. In New York, it might not slide to whatever. But now you're going out of state. Now he's he, he going out of state before we even thought about going out of state. Right? You know what I mean? Up to Maryland. He was up in Maryland. I think Annapolis. He was up in Annapolis, Maryland. And then when he came back from that, after a few times that I was doing what I was doing, you know, on a little project, like I said, that's my man Moose, you know, sitting on the bench right there, doing whatever I want to do, you know, letting them go as they go. He's like, yo, you ain't doing it like that, man. This is how you got to, you know, this is how it's done. And that's when he came back with the white, you know, and maybe he had like a half a bit, he had like a half a bird, and he came out, what the fuck you gonna do with that? And then he showed me the whip game. And he showed me, he opened a new lane for me now. Now I'm like, yo, what the fuck? You know, like, damn, it's like that. And that's how we started rocking. And as time goes on, I'm learning, but I still wasn't really, you know, getting into that. I was still doing it the way I was doing it. You know, he was showing me roles, you know? Cause me, me and bro, you know, we always did us as time goes on. But me and him together, getting that dollar together, together, it was always like, you know, cause I was, I was in my lane and he was in his lane. We had that respect for each other. And we ever needed each other to phone call away. You know what I mean? He had his team, I had my team. You know what I mean? Mm. But we were, we was like of a kind. And together, me and him doing it, it was like a bumping head, you know? But not, you know, you know, not. You know, he liked to party and do this and do that, which I like to, too. Who did it? You know? But, you know, he had his certain ways with him, you know? So what we did was, I had my lane, he had his lane. And then when he put me on to that, and bless me with some of that. I said, yo, take that right here. You don't really give me back whatever. I said, love. My boy, rest in peace, wise, put me on to New London, Connecticut. You know what I mean? And that, that, that changed my life right there. You know, from sitting on the back, on the bench, the project, to, you know, doing that. I went up to New London, Connecticut. You know, and I went out there, and wise told me about it. And me and another cousin went out there. And, you know, he wasn't a hustler, you know, but he tried it, you know. He liked that fast cash, you know, doing all this shit. But, you know, I went out there and I said, oh, it's something out here. I, I feel it. You know, and when we came back, you know, it took a little long the first time. You know, the first time out there, I said, nah, I like that town. And then I went back out there. You know, and I kept on going and going. And, and that was a turning point. I, I took over, you know, you know, I was doing my thing. And I caught my bed. That's when I caught a bed, though. And I left in 89. So all this I'm talking about is from like 87 to 88. It happened quick. You know? It happened quick. Like How old was you when you was going out to CT? I'm, when I went to Connecticut, I was 17 years old. 
at 16 just turning 17. Jumped on an Amtrak, had a, had a bomb in my pocket and in my bag. I probably had like a $5,000 bomb in my bag. Jumped on the Metro Amtrak, ain't know where I was going. Wise just told me to take it to New London, Connecticut. There's a hotel out there, the, the, the Ramada Inn or the Radisson Hotel. Go get a room there, have somebody check you in. I got my, my cousin out there, he'll, he'll meet you at the train, he'll check you in. And you go to get a hotel room, and you go to Truman Street. That's all I know. So, you know, not that ain't much going off, you know what I mean? But at that time, you know, we was taking chances, you know what I mean? Risk takers. And I did what I did to do. Got to the hotel. They checked me in. I paid for the room for like three nights. I woke up in the morning, and I took a cab to Truman Street. That's the only thing I knew. That was a strip. Go to Truman Street. I went to Truman Street, started walking around, looking around. I, I had like a 500 pack on me. I took out there with me. I stashed it, kept like three or four joints in my mouth, walking around. And before you know it, somebody, yo, got one, two. Now, the value was different. My five hour joints in New York was going for 20 out there. Mm. You know? So, so now I'm like, whoa, you know what I mean? I get used to this, you know? And I started rocking like that. And the town was nice, not too far by. See, not like going south. I was going up there, Maryland, and all that three hours, four and a half hours. That was, that was too much of a ride for me. You know what I mean, I was like an hour and a half, two hours, 95 straight. You know, as, as time when I knew about it, when I got older, I found out about it. You know, but you know, I, I, it was it was it was sweet for me, and I found my home. And when I took off from there, we took off. You know what I mean? And I used to come back there with me out there after a while. End up coming out there with me. And I went out to Maryland with him too a few times. But like, I like my, my nest. But then I got jammed up for the charge in New York, a gun charge, went up north from 89 to 91. And that's when, you know, a lot of things change. LG done changed, different kids growing up, the young ones from the front, you know? Cause like I said, my man Fruit, my man Biz, my man, um, them young boys up there, Puerto Rock, Black Red, all of them was running wild up there, you know what I mean? It was young kids running, you know, was coming up, getting their name. But I went about mine with the game, you know what I mean? They went about theirs, but you know, bobbing, you know, doing what they had to do, you know, busting that gun, you know what I mean? Doing what they had to do. You know, so everybody got different stories, you know? LG got a bunch of stories, kid. You know, it ain't just about, like, what you see now, you hear now, CNB, this and that, world, not, not, before all of that stuff, it was love. We all had love for each other. But you know, when the drug game comes out, and the crack era comes out, and that money gets involved, best friends become strangers, kid. All childhood friends, you know what I mean? Childhood friends, man. And childhood friends that would go to war for each other back in the days, from the front to the back. You couldn't come to LG and think, oh, I'm gonna go fuck Mikey up right there, and, and one of them LG dudes from any building is gonna let that happen. Not gonna happen, bro. And that's why we had dudes from East New York, from Brooklyn, from Bed-Stuy, from any Rock, they used to come to LG Friday nights. And then mind you, before all that happened, before we get in the game, we had the best boosters in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? We had Red, Tawana, God bless. We had Keisha, we had Sean, God bless, Tawana. The Cabana girls, all that, all that started in LG. You know, all that started in LG. And they was out there taking everything, you know, and coming back in the hood, kept us flies, butter sauce, this, that. We was, tough. we was living, man. We was living. So, you know, like we had, everything came out of there. You know what I mean? You know, everything. And dudes would come from all over to see them girls to buy stuff. Jill, we had, you know, we, there was, there was no joke, son. There was no joke. And we would, we used to go, we was kids, go hold them down. You know what I mean? Somebody in the store. Security tried to grab them. We was, you know, we did a lot of things as kids, you know? We did a lot of things as kids that I look back at and be like, yeah, I was a wild boy. You know? But, you know, you know, um, some made it out, some didn't, you know? And some got a story to tell, and some, you know, just was in the way, you know? And a lot of these dudes that I'm naming and doing this and me ain't gonna go on all that, you know? They went out like suckers. They end up telling and, and doing this. And, but before all of that, man, LG was love, man. 
and LG was love. That's what that's what I'm speaking about. That's what I really want to get out there. How the, the love was when that crack game came and that money came. Like I said, man, things change, you know. And and dudes that 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 you seen like was brothers, man, eating at the same table together. This is a message to all viewers, all listeners. As I said before, there will be stories on this channel that may be offensive to some, that may be harsh to some, that may be a little bit hurtful to some, and some people are forced to relive these stories in their mind when they don't want to. So let's just keep in mind that when we put these stories together, we're not on here trying to glorify anything. We're not on here trying to glamorize the criminal lifestyle. We're on here documenting actual history and giving people the opportunity to explain to the world how their life went astray and they ended up going down the wrong path. So once again, let's be respectful and let's learn something. When we was all 12 and 13 years old, being little badass kids, I don't know what, what the fuck happened, but Nut got scooped up by two Brooklyn legend niggas. Rest in peace, Ron K and Nate Cash off of Northern Avenue. These niggas took a liking to Little Peanut. And Nut was the first little nigga in my projects in Midtown. So Nut coming through when he 13 years old, $300 fee, a lot of suits, $250 Gucci sneakers. Who was it that basically like you came up under in LG? All right, well, when I came out the house, you know what I'm saying? I came out the house in the early 80s, you know what I'm saying? You talking 85, 86, just being a badass little kid, ripping, running the streets, trying to be like the older niggas. And at that time, you know what I'm saying? My project was doing, going hard with Midtown. You know what I'm saying? You talking 85, 86. 85, 86, I was a little nigga. I'm 12 years old, 13 years old. But at this time, digging pockets, Midtown, Jocelyn, Boston, and all that shit. That shit hit Ben Stop Brooklyn like wildfire. So, crack wasn't around yet. Niggas wasn't hustling in, in, in Brooklyn. Niggas was still robbing and taking it. Put the keys on taking it, you know what I'm saying? So, niggas was still hitting the jewelry stores, running up in the stores, taking leathers, doing all that stupid shit. Tearing down the walkathons, any Bud Fest concert at the garden. Can't take the niggas nowhere. That's the niggas was doing in the 80s. So, I, it wasn't like it was a major nigga who had shit locked down when I came out the house. Everybody was taking it. That's what we should call it, taking it. Mm. Now, me personally, I caught my first juvie in 87, Halloween 87 to be exact. I caught my juvie in 87, niggas was still doing the digging pockets. I caught a juvie out there for digging a pocket. Whatever, I go away, I do a little 18 month bid, I come home, it's 89. Now, shit done changed. Niggas is still going to Midtown digging pockets in Brooklyn. But crack is out. And niggas is trying to hustle now. Niggas is doing different things. So in my hood, Roz was that one nigga in 89 who elevated and so went from digging pockets to selling crack and he held that shit down. And 89 was a hot summer in Bad Star, especially in my projects, cause 89 the nigga Bush came home. He left in 83, killing a bread man or some shit back in the days of the project. So when he left, we was babies. When he come in 89, we don't really know who the fuck he is, but I guess the streets know who he is. So he came home, had a bunch of jail niggas running around with him. They was throwing guns in niggas' faces, robbing fake side corner boys who was hustling or whatever but as far as Lafayette Gardens was concerned that was Wise and the funny shit about it was see I grew up with Wise Wise, Wise was world older brother but I was I'm older than world so it was like I was in between them but Wise was like a big brother to me too because we lived in the same building 
So I watch why I transition from mid from Catholic school to Midtown to selling drugs. I watched that transition. And Wise ain't never had a shooter around him. None of that shit. Why? Because Wise was a shooter himself. Wise always handled his own business. And I have to give him his flowers, son. Because in 89, he held Lafayette Gardens down by himself. Bush wasn't getting no money in them projects. Polite wasn't getting no money in them projects. And all these niggas was ripping and running. God bless the dead, Polite, T-Rock, all them niggas. They was coming through LG 89 summer, son. They presence was felt in my hood. But they wasn't getting no money in there, son. Wise held that down for dope. That's 89 in LG. And then around 90, Wise started experiencing some bad luck. And that's when World kind of came out of his shell. But I'm going to take you back to their relationship. When Wise was ripping and running the streets, he ain't want World in the street. He chased World out the streets every day. But you know how that shit is. The more you tell a nigga no, the more he going to want it. So the more Wise chased World in the house, the more World wanted to be out the house. Then they had this brotherly love competition shit. World didn't start hustling because he wanted to be this big drug dealer or have a motherfucking crew and call shots and he didn't that's not why world started hustling world simply started hustling because he wanted to defy his brother world wise didn't want him hustling so he wanted to hustle then he developed this taste for i want to be better than why why started experiencing bad luck world started trying to stack his people all out of competition son it was brotherly love and love hate and brotherly competition that's all that shit was mm. but wise kept experiencing that bad luck to the point where world just kept coming up coming up coming up now mind you everybody was ripping and running with wise niggas fell in world lap world picked up where wise left off so all that shit these niggas doing these YouTubes on CNB. World came out the house and developed a knack for hustling by the Hamilton brothers, which is bullshit. That shit is bullshit. That shit is bullshit. That's how that's how World developed his knack for hustling. He wanted to get on Wise fucking nerves. That's all that shit was. You know what I'm saying? And I was there for that. And CNB wasn't a fucking crew that was running around in projects doing all that crazy shit. It was a bunch of little niggas in LG that grew up together, went to school together, and everybody did their own thing. Everybody had their own little packages trying to get money, or niggas was going to Midtown digging their own pockets. Everybody was their own fucking man. It just happened that we all fucked with each other, and it looked like we was a fucking crew, gang, clique, whatever the fuck they was calling it. But that's far from the truth. But did we rock with each other? Absolutely. Absolutely. How old was how old was you when you first started going down the mid and digging? Alright, this is what happened with the midtown shit. Like I said, niggas was we was little niggas, 85, 86. Niggas was still being bad, little niggas coming out the crib, stealing, doing bad shit. But we, we was mostly playing ball in my hood. My projects is notorious for a, a, a basketball tournament called Sullivan Smith. And a lot of niggas came through Sullivan Smith. Shout out to Moses Scurry, NCAA Chan, motherfucking Lloyd Sweet Pete Daniels, Kenny Anderson, Mark Jackson. All these niggas, before they became NBA players and NCAA players, he played in Sullivan Smith and LG. So my project has a history way before CMB. You know what I'm saying? Even when it comes to the music. Big Daddy Kane, Mr. C and all them niggas. Them niggas was rapping and throwing jams in LG before record deals. You know what I'm saying? So my project has a history before CMB. But I personally came out the house with that Midtown shit. I'ma say when I was 12. And the reason why, it was because of one person. That nigga nut. When we was all 12 and 13 years old, being little badass kids, I don't know what what the fuck happened, but nut got scooped up by two Brooklyn legend niggas. Rest in peace, Ron K and Nate Cash off of Northern Avenue. 
these niggas took a liking to Little Peanut. And Nut was the first little nigga in my projects in Midtown. So Nut coming through when he 13 years old, $300 fee, a lot of suits, $250 Gucci sneakers, driving the XXL 125. And niggas is like, yo, what the fuck? I like overnight. This happened overnight, you know what I'm saying? And he like, yo, Midtown, this is what it is. So Nut legend started in Midtown. He was one of the youngest niggas in Midtown taking money. And that developed my knack for that shit. And I wasn't as lucky as that nigga. I went out there and got knocked off as soon as I stuck my motherfucking head in the nigga pocket. You know what I'm saying? So I went and did my juvenile bit before Nut even did his juvenile bit. So I went off in 87. I got knocked off Halloween in 87. I was in Spawford when Ron K, rest in peace, got murdered in my projects as well as 50 Singers murdered in four and all these projects. I was sitting in Spawford when those two bodies dropped in the book. Hmm. Yeah, that's 87. I went off, did my first juvenile bid, came home 89. 89, I caught a second bid, did that little six months in DFY, came home in 90, did another one. Then I started touching back and sound in 90, 90, 91. Let's also let, we gotta let the, let the listeners know, like, you know, Brooklyn, the other boroughs think, you know, snatching pockets and, and Midtown and all of that was like petty crimes, but a lot of dudes don't know. Dudes was coming up, catching now, pockets. Yo, yo, I'm keeping it 100 with you, son. I watch niggas come up in Midtown, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know niggas that was perfect. It was niggas in my projects, like little niggas, like Nut, Star, and Black Lee. Like, these niggas had golden arms. Like, these niggas they never took short money in Midtown. I'm talking these niggas 13, 14, 15 years old going to Midtown every day coming home with four, five, six thousand dollars. Like, hmm. that's big money. That ain't small money. That wasn't mm-hmm. small money in the 80s and early 90s for no motherfucking 14 and 15 year old kid. That ain't even small money now for a grown ass man to be taking, to to bring five, six thousand dollars a day home. That's like, crazy. Man, that's why I say, that's why I asked you earlier, like, Nut Legend was way before he even touched crack. <laughs> Nut was before his time, before he even thought about selling crack. I'm going to give him his flowers. That's a fact. So you say he was 13 years old, digging with older dudes. Yeah, for some reason, these two, and these two niggas was Brooklyn legends. Like I said, rest in peace, Ron K. And they cast, and they off of no snap. I don't know, these two older niggas liked them some little nut. <laughs> and nut came out his shell fucking with them two niggas. That's when nut came out his shell. Nut was taking money in midtown. When you came home from those from that Sparfit bid and all of that, Nut was up already? Now when I came home, Nut was still like I came home from one of my juvenile bids in 90. And Nut scooped me up. And he was still doing his little digging pockets thing. But being around him every day coming home from my juvenile bid, I was noticing he was developing a knack for hustling. He started hanging around Shabon in my projects. Now, me personally, I was never into that hustle shit. I was always on some midtown shit. I want an Instagram vacation. I put a nigga in my hands, a nigga pocket, take me some money, keep pushing. But shit was changing. And Nut was developing a taste for hustling, fucking with Shot Boom. And that was in 90. So from the year 1990, Nut became a hustler. Me, I was still ripping and running, doing my midtown shit. I fucked around and caught a, a, a six billion bid. And that's when I first went to Rack and Salad. And it was a Brooklyn Bronx beef that was going on. Yes. And that's when that, that was my introduction. You see, season. you was in a four building first, then you then you got sentenced, then they sent you to the six building? I came to the four building. I was in the four building for four months to be exact, and I caught a city bid, so I did eight months. I did half of it in the four building, the other half in the six building. You said it was a Bronx and Brooklyn war going on? Yeah, when I came to the four building, it was a Brooklyn Bronx beef that was extended from the year of 1990. So I came through in 9 1 and that shit was still jumping off. So ah, that was my introduction. You know what I'm saying? I had to come through, shake it up, do what I do. And I slid to the sixth building, went over there, shook that shit up. That shit was monumental. I went over there, shook that shit up, and then I slid home. But when I came back, 
for my strength. That's when I shook the four building up. My bro, you know, I don't want to get all into your personal business and shit like that, but you know, I've been heard about you a million years before we had this conversation. I know a lot of shit. And me personally, I went to jail for an accidental body where I was playing with a gun and a gun went off and it shot a girl and killed her. And I was facing 25 out of life for that. I ended up getting a manslaughter in the second degree. Wow. Yeah. That's so much similar to mine. Yes. I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not ashamed, embarrassed, or, uh, you know what I'm saying? Because my shit was monumental in my hood. My shit actually shook up my hood because mine was accidental. Not only, it was a female, and not only, only she, was she a, a just a female, but she was a staple in my hood. You know what I'm saying? She was a legend in my hood. She was well-loved, well-liked, well-respected, mm -hmm. and that shit kind of like, it changed the temperament in my hood. You know what I mean? It definitely did. It changed the temperament in my hood. It sat me down for 23 years to be exact. Cause I always, I always when, when I saw you on Rikers Island, when I got a glimpse of you in the Ford building back in the days, and then you know I heard about your history and your case and stuff like that, I was like, yo, I, in my head as a little 16 year old kid, I was like, son is locked up for a, a body that he really didn't intentionally do and he's still an animal like that up in here like you feel what i'm saying like you know i always felt like yo this dude is the realest dude in the world like i mean his son is locked up for 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 some a case similar to mine and he running the whole rikers island no on some g shit though right on some g shit i'm gonna I'm keep it up top with you when when I came back and I ran through the full building the way I did, I didn't do that shit because I was just able to do that shit. It was some steppers in the building with me, son. Don't get that fucked up. Shoe Shine was in the building with me. Big Heck, rest in peace, was in the building with me. Mick was in the building with me. Jerm was in the building with me. And these was all my crimes and my comrades. Now, these wasn't no niggas who was just let me run through them and do what the fuck I wanted to do. These was my guys, and these niggas had love and respect for me. And they they let me shine the way I shine. They let me do the things I did. You know what I'm saying? They let me have my moment. That's it was my therapy. Because I was a young nigga going through some shit with that case. You know what I mean? Mm. So a lot of my motherfucking actions was out of anger and hostility. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and, and probably I don't say fear. Because I ain't know what the fuck was going to happen to me in the judicial system. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I'm going to give all my comrades their flowers. Because at no time did them niggas ever challenge me or try to uh, say, say that nigga ain't all that. Or you know what I'm saying? No cornball shit. Or want a problem with me or try to test me. You know what I mean? It, it never came to that. And at any given time, shit could have went left. And I could have went to war with one of them niggas and them niggas kids that came up on top. You know what I'm saying? So I want I I, I don't want to not say that. Them niggas was there. Them niggas was stand up niggas. Them niggas niggas repping in that building when I was there. Them niggas held me down when I was banging with the Latin Kings and all that shit. Those were my crimes, my comrades, and my brothers. Straight jacket. How old was you when you came through for that stretch? I got knocked in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania when I was 17. I turned 18 in Harrisburg and they brought me to, to New York. So when I got to the full building, I was 18. So what you was already working out crazy in DFY and stuff like that? Cause you was, so, I remember you being yeah, extremely yeah. brolic in the full building. I'm like, God damn. Yeah, that's hilarious. Cause I did three juvenile out there. So I always played ball. I always worked out. I played flag football, all that shit. I went through puberty and juvenile, so yeah, I had some I, I had some height weight on me at a young age. <laughs> I was throwing my weight around at a young age. Both of y'all nut too was a brolic motherfucker at a young age, yeah. right? Yeah, you see, he was my inspiration. Like I said, man, I'm gonna give him, I'm gonna give my nigga his flowers, son. I'm gonna give my niggas his flowers, son. That nigga was before his time. That nigga was the, one of the youngest niggas in there doing what he do. He was one of the first little niggas to go to DFY and get cocked up, come home, come home with his shit cocked up, like give Nut his flowers. Nut was before his time, man. <laughs> Nut was before his time. That was my guy. Rest in peace, Ivy Davis.
Nah, but all of this is jewels, my bro. You know what I mean? I don't wanna, I don't wanna drain you out of all of this, all of this shit in one time. This Listen, shit is I'm here for you, brother. Mm -hmm. I like what you're doing. I'm gonna respect you as a journalist. And if I can help you propel your motherfucking career or, or your brand or whatever the fuck it is, that's what I do, son. That's Brooklyn love. You know what I'm saying? You it's Brooklyn know. love. I appreciate that, my bro. I appreciate it's that. It's Brooklyn love. You fuck with my boy, say come on, Sha. And Sha, that's my guy. You know what I'm saying? I want to shout out to Sha. Sha was one of them niggas. <laughs> Sha did things his way. And sometimes that shit got him in trouble with niggas that didn't like him. But I don't give a fuck about none of that. Niggas know how I felt about Sha. That's my guy. Salute to Saquon. Sha. <laughs> Crown Heights. Fort Greene. That's my nigga. Yeah, that's man. my nigga. <laughs> I see you fuck with them hard, so if I could do what I could do for you, it's all love. So let me ask you, like, when crack came out, did that change everything in LG? I'm gonna have to say so because, like, like I said, Wise was pretty much the first one in '89 doing what he do. In '90, when Nuts started hustling, World started hustling. Yeah, crack, crack kind of did that. Pause. When World started hustling, what he did, he just he put he put work in the same projects that Wise was getting. Like he was putting work in the projects on his own. LG is four corners, seven buildings. This is the ill shit. As 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 big as the name is, son, we probably the smallest projects you could think of. We got four corners and seven buildings. I don't know how we created a back, front, and middle out of seven buildings, but we did it to make us feel like we were bigger than what we were. But we was a little ass hard projects. You know what I'm saying? So, when, well, like I said, when Wise was going through his motherfucker trial and tribulation, and and world was out there hustling, yeah, we was hustling in the projects. Because once Wise took his fall, the projects was pretty much up for grabs. Pretty much up for grass, but wasn't no real hustlers out there. So if a nigga was hustling, a nigga was hustling a hundred and fifty dollar pack, a five hundred dollar pack. Wasn't nobody trying to really come up. World did it all out of his competition with his fucking brother. <laughs> That's all that was, homie. That's all that was. He wanted to get on Wise fucking nerves, man. They had this brotherly. Love, hate, competition, shit. Sibling That's rivalry. Sibling rivalry, man. That shit was a joke to world at first. <laughs> Laughing when wives take a fall. Niggas fuck with world one week. The next week they fucking with wives. Like it was, it was hilarious. It was hilarious, man. It was hilarious. It was a fucking joke. And we all sitting in the same crib every day, mind you. You talking about when wives was locked up? Wise was taking his fall in and out of jail, catching cases. He could never pick, get his feet planted back. You know, he, he just came across a string of bad luck at one time. I'm gonna say for about, not from about 90 to about a good three years, 90 to about 93, 93, 94, Wise was going through it out there. When Wise got back out there like 9-4, he put he, he put shit back in perspective. Tell him. They ain't have no type of relationship outside of competing with each other. Like they ain't hang with each other, go out to eat shit. Yeah. Yeah. They we did see why why wasn't one of them niggas who stepped out of LG like that. And if he did, he didn't mingle with too many niggas. So his father's rounds was LG. That was him. So the world was still his little brother. It was sibling rivalry. Like I told you, that shit was a joke to us. That shit was a joke to them. They didn't have beef. If a nigga violated World Wise, was checking shit. And if a nigga, if niggas didn't violate Wise, but if Wise had a problem, like I told you, see, Wise didn't have shit. I was going to lead up to that. Wise didn't have shooters around him. Wise had niggas around him that was hustled for him. Wise had niggas around him that he was smoked with. Niggas he was cool with. But Wise didn't have shooters around him. And Wise didn't have those problems. But if he did beat, Wise picked up his gun, his motherfucking self. Now, when he was going through that string of bad luck, he got into a couple incidents where Wise was getting into some shootouts and shit. And that's when I'm going to have to officially say CMB 
became C and B because it was the little niggas who said, nah, we ain't going for that. So now niggas is running with Wise on Chef of World. That's his brother. Little niggas in the project. So now we banging with Wise. So now that's when that C and B shit. And you could honestly say we became a family because we had the whole Wise down. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But in the process, he just couldn't never get back on his feet. Like I said, he had like a two, three year run. Bad fucking luck. And while he was having that bad luck, the world was climbing up the ladder. Right there in the projects. But they ain't have no beef. Like, like no fucking beef. Like, they hated each other or they were shooting at each other. Uh, if a nigga told you that, they lying. Nah, I never heard no shit like that. Yeah. Wise didn't want world in the street. And you know how that shit is with, with a child or a younger sibling. The more you tell them no, the more you tell them stop, the more they defy you. You know what I'm saying? So... Wise running down on niggas. Don't be giving my little brother no drugs. Don't be giving my little brother no fucking guns. Like Wise running down on niggas. And the more he did that, the more world defied him. That's how world came out of the shell. That's how he came out of the shell. Getting on his fucking older brother nerves. I'm saying shout out to Mikey because he plugged me into you. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't know, he didn't know I was watching you. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, I'll be watching last. He was like, world, I could call that nigga. I was like, yeah, I'll be watching him. I'm watching him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm sure you, you had to hear your name get mentioned several times on the channel. Absolutely. 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 By me, by me and other people. YouTube. It's a lot of stuff on the internet about the legacy of one of the most notorious housing projects in Brooklyn, LG, Lafayette Gardens. I think it's time we hear that story from those who actually created that legacy. So get ready, Gen Pop is in the building. The real story of LG. We was like Batman and Robin, you know? And nothing was Batman and I was Robin. See, but you got to remember this, lad. Batman needed Robin, you feel me? Batman needed Robin. So me and him together was a dynamic duo. You said that, that London, Connecticut spot, that was really Wise spot and he put you on to that? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Wise, Wise had family out there. We had a cousin named Kai Wong. Ah, so Wise went out there with him. You know, was out there for a little bit. Why he caught a situation out there and he put in some work. He couldn't go back out there no more. So he left it alone. You know what I mean? Fuck it. You know, he came back to the project because Wise was, Wise was in the project. The project was his. You know what I mean? The, the fun he had it, he had it. Wise was a, a good dude. You know what I mean? Like a, a real dude. You know, he was, he was solid. He was solid. No, no fuck boy shit around him. He ain't, he ain't, with the goofy shit. If you're goofy, he's gonna let you know you're goofy. You know what I mean? If you're awful, you know what I mean? You have to be straight up on them, bro, you know? And I respect them for that. So one day he came up to me. See, him, Wise and my brother was in the same class in, in Catholic school. Remember I told you, we went to Catholic school. Mm-hmm. You know? We all went to Catholic school. They came from a good family. We had a good family. You know? We were just, you know, from the same hood. And, and, he came up to me, he go, she watch me, you know, watch my moves and said, yo, you out here, you know, this LG, you know, getting this money. I'm gonna put you on to this town of London. I think you'd be good out there. I'd be like, yeah, I ain't, I'll go. He said, you know, I, I see that hustle in you, bro. You know, you ain't with the other shit, you don't be with the office shit, you know, you know, you just do you. And he had respect, him and my brother had, it was cool. So respect that he had for my brother, he gave me the torch. He could have gave it to anybody. Why he picked me, what he saw in me, or the potentials he knew I probably had, he gave me, he gave me the torch. And he gave me the info, gave me the phone number to do it. And I was I was scared, you know, I was young, 17. I said, man, this is it, $20? I'm doing this down here. But I gotta come over a lot for my mom, you know what I mean? You don't tell my mom. 
you know, so I had to come up with some more crazy lies. I was going to a basketball camp, and it was a tournament, and Ma, I want to be in there. Please, is it Queens? I had Hedo come with me. We stayed at Hedo's uncle house. We had a we had a, 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 a fiend pick up the phone to call my mom that she was Hedo's uncle. Oh, it was crazy, so, you know? But we pulled it off. We pulled it off. I got on that train, kid. And that's how I ended up in New London. But Wise. Wise put me onto that town. You know? And, and I never forget that. And then I came home. You feel me? When I came home, I started going back and forth, back and forth. I started getting my money up. Now I'm getting my money up on right now. You know? You see, Wise, a good looking man. I blessed him. You know? I blessed him, right? I think I gave him a stack. I think after a while, I started so stacking. What, he he just put you on the. He just put you on to the town. He just put you on to the town for you to just do you. Do me. That's it. He that's wasn't. He boy. wasn't expecting no money from you or nothing. 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 He ain't asked for nothing. He ain't do nothing. He said you just gotta get your own wares. And the reason why I'm giving it to you like that. And mind you, there was a lot of people on that project. But he just seen it. He seen it in me. He seen it in me. He wasn't wrong. And he wasn't wrong. You know, he wasn't wrong. You know, he 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 seen it in me. He know that. That I had it, the potential to, to go out there and, and do right in that town and get right. You know, he knew it. He ain't asked for nothing, homie. He ain't asked for nothing, lads. I swear, that's how it really was. Just him and my brother, like I said, was mad tight. It was mad tight, you know what I mean? And it was, it was like, you know, that was mad. They was going to bed together. Like, why well, was getting money? Like, you know what I mean? He, he had his outlet, you know? He was thinking they was out there going to Midtown, get it. To my getting it, you know, and my brother, and then Wise well, had his little team, and you know, they, 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 they was, it was, it was love, man. And he passed me that torch and asked for nothing, but I had to get my own wins, you know. And that's when I went to my man Moose, he blessed me. That's when I, it was hitting me with captions at the time. And that's before the whole, my man, little man, not shit, you know, but I was getting the captions at the time. But I was still eating with that, you know, because remember, I told you, it was going for $20 out there five in here. So dude was just charging me the five dollars for the capsule in New York. So I'm making fifteen dollars profit for each capsule. So I'm coming up. If you do it right. But you know you got a lot of jokers that ain't know how to do it and go out there and just fuck it up and come back and blow their bread on an outfit this, that, and I. I came back. I gave that back. I did that and out of all the money I made he gave me some more shit and I said, hey, take this now. Now I'm buying these right now. I'm paying a front for these capsules now. And I was doing like that. Even though I was still, you know, young, and I ain't know no better about getting the weight and all that, but you know, I was still coming up. Then I came up a few times and I threw wise a stack. What's this for? I said, that's for the love, bro. That's for the love. He's like, oh, good looking, my nigga, you know? We have to do that. That's how real wise was, you know, the good dude, man. Like LG was love, man. I was love, like we, 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 we looked out for each other back then. You know, in the eight, I think we looked out for each other. You know, then, I'm gonna tell you the situation how, how real it was. Then, then I started eating, right? And then I started, I left my man Moose, and I started fucking with this dude from Kings and the Troop. Two brothers, Nuki and Duca. You know, they, they were selling their weight, they were doing their thing, you know. Nuki had a banging ass Cherokee, the old school Cherokee, you know. Like 80, 85, 86, Cherokee, whatever. It was like, it was like 1988. Yeah, like an 80s, the box Cherokee joints with the main system, you know? The main system, you hear that shit, you hear that shit three blocks away, bro. You know? So, he was like, yo, he's selling it for five stacks. So I go up there, you know, and I'm up there with the bros, and I'm like, yo, you up in this gambling joint. And he like, you know, give me some time, I gotta make some moves. Yo, I got there like around four o'clock, and I was in that gambling joint till like 8, 30, 9 o'clock. So I'm like, damn, bro, what the fuck? You know? Then he finally said, come on, let's go. We gonna go get the truck. And I gotta go make a move right now. Then we gonna, I'm gonna clear the truck out and you can take it. I said, all right, cool. So now, we go. They drive me to a block. I don't know where I was at. I was somewhere in Bad Stop. I'd be lying if I tell you the block. We pull up in the block, but it was where he lived at. We lived in his house. So he runs in the house. Now, when we get in the truck, it's man getting in the front and another dude in the back with me. You know what I mean? So we riding, system on, you know, boom, we riding. We pull up to his crib, 
And I know that was the career because I used to do real up from the homie, you know? I used to go get two, you know, go cop from him. So now he goes in there, I'm, I'm figuring he's going to shoot these dudes in the truck, you know what I mean? So him and the passenger get out. I'm in the back seat with some old school dude next to me. Our homie, when they go in, he turn, he reaches over to the front and turn the music up all the way, real loud. I'm like, damn, this shit loud already. What the fuck? What are you trying to, you know? But I ain't, I'm still vibing, you know what I mean? I'm thinking, you know? The next thing I know, I got a gun in my head. You feel me? He put the hammer to my head to my, give me the money, short, give me the money. I'm like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? So I dig in my pocket, I give him 1200. And mind you, I had 1200 in my pants pocket. Any stick up kid that you can rob, my nigga, and a 17, 18 year old kid, 17 year old kid, give me 1200, that's a come up. You know what I mean? But then he hit me with nine. I'm like, Lord, you know what I want. Where the rest at? How he knew I had the rest? You know what I mean? What the mm -hmm. fuck? I just gave you 1200. What you mean, where the rest at? So then he started patting me down and felt good in my jacket. I have five bands. Take that. And he jumps out and told me, get out and run. I'm like, man, I'm not running, man. They're gonna shoot me. So he just let one off, boom. When he let one off, I looked down. I was standing in like, boy, he was like, boy, you on the floor. I'm like, what the fuck? I thought I was hit. I dipped to the side, he dipped off. I go back to the crib. I'm like, yo, go keep what up? The man just struck me, he like, what? He playing dumb? I don't know what to believe, son, you know? But then he drives me back home. He looked at his man. Matter of fact, he looked at the kid that was in the house with him. Shit, that's some bullshit, man. I told you, that's my man out there. So I kind of believe Nuki. I believe the story, you know? Because he looked at Nuki, he's right in front of face. He's your, he's your beat, man. You gonna do that, man? Why you gonna have your man do that to my man? Because he knew I was buying a truck off him. So he drives me back to the hood, Nuki, in the Jeep that I supposed to have blood, you know what I mean? So when we get there, I see Wise and my man Shambo on the corner. She said, yo, nigga just stuck me a lot. My Wise went upstairs, go get the hammers. I'm back downstairs and made Nookie drive us to the kid house. You know what I mean? That's how, that's how, that's how tough he was. That's how, that's how the love that we have for each other in, in LG, you know what I mean? And none of the situation, none at all. He went and got the Mac and the other hammer and made him draw us to the kid's house. And and, and, and and some plays started happening there. Bump, you know what I mean? Leave it at that. And then came back to the hood, you know? And the next day, Luki came to see me with a 250 and be like, yo, bro, this is for you. Yo, bro, this is for you, you know what I mean? You're lost, you know what I mean? Take that. And my boss said, give it back. You know what I mean? I said, all right. You blessed me with 250. I ran off. I said, this is me, man. We even now. Now we even. You know what I mean? Now we even, bro. Now we even. You know, there's some drive. There's five stacks they took from me. I got my five back with that 250. We even. We done. What you mean? 250, 250 grams? Yeah. He gave me 250 grams. It was like 20. It was like, you know, like 27 grams. He gave me 250 grams. He said, it was a it, it added up to about like five thousand to buy that at that time. So he was like, "Take that, get your money back, and see me back, and then you could you could keep on doing business." And I was reading up with them niggas about like that, buying a biggie, a big A, two fifty, two hundred grand. And I'm just coming up. So he blessed me with the two fifty because he seen how the homies came through and handled, you know, and he couldn't get the gear. He got lucky, but you know, you know. He felt some pain, but you know, um, he came back around the way and he gave me a 250 the next day. Cause he knew I went up there with Wise, I went up to my man Sambo, and they named his ring, you know what I mean? And he said, yo, I don't wanna lose you guys, uh, you know, you know, we do business. But I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't like that vibe no more. So I took my 250, I said, we good, bro, you know? He expected me to pay him back. I was like, nah, we good, we even. Let's call it even. And that's when I stopped messing with them. And that's when that was like, you know, come fuck with me. Come see my peoples. We be good. And that's when he told me the whole game about chefing and everything like that. You know what I mean? That's when I said, you know what? I'm gonna stay with my LG family. Because when I see like go distance and go left, shit don't go right. Cause there's a lot of snakes in the grass. 
and like I said, that's when our project was, we was born. We all made sure we was all right. And then I ended up catching the bed. You know what I mean? I ended up going up north and I thought two to six, quick fast, you know? How you got, how you got trapped off? What you got caught? Got caught with some drugs? I got caught with a hammer. I got caught with a hammer that had a drug charge. You know, and I went up north. But you had an open drug charge when you got caught with the hammer? Yeah, I had an open drug charge and then I got caught with a hammer. Wait, where you got caught with the ham at? I got caught in front of my projects, coming up the building. Because that was right after that incident with these dudes. You know, so I had to, so I was going to the store. It was like nine in the morning, I'm going to the store. But something told me, let me bring my hammer. Cause like, you just, you just, you just blazed with these dudes. And you know, I, I just want to be safe and sorry. So I put the hammer on me and I go downside. And when I'm coming back from the store, I see the housing police coming out. Not that they was dressed in housing uniforms, like they was the maintenance man, but I knew they was police. Mm. And they see me dip out, like, I, I, I froze, and, I, and I, they see my hand move. I threw the hammer in the bushes. See how I did that. Wrong move, you know what I mean? I panicked. I fumbled at the goal line, you know how that shit go? <laughs> and they, they went up in the bushes, found me. So they sent me up north, I did a two to six. You know, I was young, you know what I mean? I wasn't built for all that, I wasn't ready. How old ready. was you at that time? Huh? How old was you, you said? I was 17 years old when I was out. I was young. And mind you, it was it was like right after Easter. So now I'm on the island with the with the with the with the Sergio Tarsini sweatsuit on, the Air Max, the Swatch watch. I'm looking like food. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I weighed a buck 35, you know? And, and and I'm up in that motherfucker, you know? And Luckily, you know, the other home, my man Sambo was on the island, you know, a few other homies on the island. Sambo had the island on lock. You know, I ain't gonna find it that time. At that time, he had it on lock. Who, you talking about Sambo? Sambo, yeah, he had it on lock. You know, he had it on lock, and I can't do it, let niggas know. And then knowledge from Tompkins was there, God bless his dad, you know. Got Tony from East New York was there, because he used to mess with Tawana for my projects. So God Tony was on the island, you know. They show love. I wasn't built like that at that time, you know? The island made me man up quicker, you know? Because my brother was out there doing all of that. My brother would hold me down. My brother was always here. I was just trying to get my money and, and you know, stick and move. I wasn't with the bullshit, you know? I wasn't with that running around carrying this and doing that. Now, if I got to protect myself, my back is the wall, of course. At that time, at least I thought I did. But when I went to the island, I wasn't like that. I'm like, God damn, what the fuck, you know? So now, but then, one time, another story, some kids ran up my cell, was gonna get me. And they have it, they have it. Some, I'm Scotty, little Puerto Rican pay, excuse me, little Puerto Rican pay, Scotty, no team Scotty, and a few other dudes. Ran up in the cell with the bangers and everything, give it up. You know why? I'm like, what the fuck? I turn around, they see a picture on my sink of my brother, son. And they said, where you know green eyes from? So that's my brother. I said, hold up, that's your brother. Call that nigga right now. I said, oh shit. So I go to the jack and I said, big boy, man, you never answer that phone, man. Answer that motherfucker now, boy. It's like eight in the morning. He answered that phone, boy, he talked to them kids, man. It was all love, son. I tell you, my brother was in the pre as he was doing. He let them know who I was, what I was. And I did the easiest bid ever after that, man. That was the only encounter I had, bad encounter I had in prison, son. But that, 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 and I just started seeing it. And I learned how to jail. I learned how to move. I learned how to, to act the shit, react the shit, the things to do and not to do. And I was just a quick analyzer, quick. It was all love, you know what I mean? And then, you know, I got to man up. I go, man, you ain't going, you know, what, what? I had, to, I had to get tough. I had to get tough real quick. Young kids get tough quick. It ain't cool. It ain't cool. And it break a lot of motherfuckers and, and some make it, but, you know, I'm lucky that I'm the one that was the ones that made it, you know? Because I see a lot of bad come out of that. A lot of bad, you know? But I just was certain, I put myself around the right people and I grew up in the right area, and I knew the right bros, man. And then, 
I manned up and then my heart got big. And then I was like, you know, mm, you know, never was a bully, never was a, you know, this and that, man at the motherfucker, but they know Mikey held his own. Mikey gonna hold us down. And when I came home that two to six, I was a whole different person. And now the times have changed now, bro. You know, the young dudes in the front, they getting big now. My man Fruit, my man Butter, my little man Porter Rock, you know? Biz and all the dudes in the front, they had the front smash, but they was growing up different than I did. I was growing up trying to get that dollar and cool, get the woman and chill. They was busting that gun. They was letting it go, you know? So now the process is changing a little bit, you know what I mean? Now the young niggas in the front changing and, and world's coming up, you know? World is coming up and, you know, and, 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 and wise had it, but I think during my time when I went to prison, which, you know, in other parts of the breaking down the LG story, you're gonna hear parts when I was gone of what happened and how it happened, how the world became right, you know? So when I came home, they got, so mind you, I've been home, hot minute, but you know, the whole time I was in prison last, I was thinking about New London. Mm. You feel me? <laughs> I ain't have my one in New London. I gotta get back to New London. You knew you was you knew you was in there missing all type of paper. Yes. So what I did, I just did that. I got back to New London, lad. And it was over. You know, Nut was doing his little bed. I think he was up in the bar. You know, like the, he called a little bed. And he went to green, I believe. And, I think with the green and the cops, they little bad, whatever. But I came home and I was home like, no, Nut was home, a matter of fact, in the town step. And when I came home, Nut was out here doing it. He had the 535 black joint. Never forget that shit. They can still remember that to the day with the Momos on it. Oof. So, boy, you killing her. Come through out of the corner playing that joke. She come and talk to me. <laughs> the remix, I was like, yo. You know what I mean? That's she used to play in that motherfucker, you know what I mean? That's mm. that sexy shit. You know? Mm. I was like, damn. And he blessed me. He gave me a hundred grand. I said, do you, bro? She knew me right. I said, love, bro. I went off to the races. You went straight, you went straight to Connecticut? What? I ain't come back. When I came back last, I was driving. When I came back, I was driving. I came back with the act, photo act legend. You was on parole or you, or what? Yeah, I was on parole. I was just in and out, in and out, in and out. Sticking and moving, in and out. I had a two to six. But my PO was cool. And he didn't really bother me like that. And I wasn't doing nothing, you know what I mean? I had the first time. I talked that talk. And I'd rather, every time they come to my house business, he let me know. I'll be there Wednesday. I come home. Like I said, I was only a two hour away. I was only two hours away. So I'm in and out, in and out. I was flipping, flipping, flipping. I bought me an act legend. I was home like five months, man. Bought me an iPad with my first car, man. And then World and them getting money now. So World had to act like it was love. I tell you, it was love, man. World had to go act legend cool. My man Inf, God bless you, from East New York, little infinite. He had the red act legend cool. Mind you, I met a chick uptown, Janine. She helped change me up a little bit too because I started staying uptown. 125th and St. Nick. And I met some Harlem niggas up that way. Then I started connecting dots with them dudes, you know? And, and it's opening up all, opening up all, you know, our lane. And now they coming up town to see me. They pulling up, who these fucking niggas, man? Like for the build a full act legend coach. All of us jumping out, going to the mews, going to the clubs, the red zone. Them days, you know what I mean? Home base, pulling up, heavy, deep. They know who we were. They know who we were, the little LG boys. They know we was all living, shining, doing us. You know? Living good, man. Eating good. Looking like no money. You know, we was eating. It was, a, it was a good time to be alive, brother. I'll tell you that much. You know what I mean? When alive. you was in Connecticut, like when you went out there, you ain't never have no problems with no Connecticut niggas out there or niggas knew who you uh, was and who you was fucking with. Nah, I'm, I'm gonna say 
niggas knew who I was. It was just that the way I moved last, you gotta know how to move, man. Like these kids these days, be true, they don't think. You gotta think before you move, you know? And make every move count. And at a young age, growing up, and like I said, with nothing, with nut and wise, and all of us, yo, us little LG dudes, that's why, that's why we like that, because we used to plan shit out. We think like, 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 like we play chess, man. Like, you know, move like you're playing chess, man. Think it out. Cause if you make that move, that one more move, you get your bitch took it. You know? And, and that's how we do. So I went out there. I seen dudes come out there on some Debo shit. They ain't make it long. They found them behind us, down the block, in the woods burnt. Car burn, open the truck, body in the truck. You know, you gotta know how to move. So when I went out there, I went out there first doing me, just you know, watching the scenery, learning shit, getting cool with people doing this, you know, sticking and moving. But then as time gets on, then I see what they lacking. And what they lacking at, that's where I come. And so we could do this out here. We all eat, you know. But that don't work for everybody, cause you know, we got some people in there, whatever. But I came out there nice, then I had my team with me. So they knew. It was mostly Puerto Ricans where you was at? Nah, it was mixed. It was mixed. It was most of these black people. You know, New London, Connecticut, a lot of New York dudes down there. A lot of New York dudes. A lot of, a lot of New York dudes. You know? But I went there and took over that motherfucking town. You know, I think Puerto Rican Mikey, little Mikey. You know what I mean? Killing him. Then a few months later, did that. I was the first Puerto Rican to come through the hood with the black GS 300. I was probably like on the top three. The top three to come in the hood. You talking about in Brooklyn or out there? In Brooklyn. Brooklyn. In New York. I was the first, and I was in the top three in Brooklyn. I think JG had the first one. Shabon had one, and it was either me or Casino Mike. My man Casino Mike had one too. But, like I said, I came through with mine, rimmed up, like, you know, coming through, like, you know, as so, we was repping, man. Which, how y'all was, you just copping them shit straight cash, certified pre owned, know how you was getting them? Cash. My man, we, we, we you know a car dealership, and we go, and we drop take cash on it. But they were doing the paperwork as if you're doing it. You know, they wrecked it out. Nothing knew somebody that was doing it. Nothing had that. And he had the um, the 535 at the maximum. And then, like, that, was, that cash was coming so fast, slash, man. In New London, man. I had an ES at first. And I was with the Harlem chick. And she was like, yo, you hustling, you doing this. Some kid pulled up. I'll never forget it, kid. She broke my heart. <laughs> she broke my heart. I had an ES 300. She said, yo. You supposed to have that. You out there hustling. I love this nigga. The, the great GS300 just came out. I'm like, damn. That was the first spaceship in the hood. My ES was good. I had the ES300, kid. I said, that shit was fire. But when she hit me with that last, I was like, yo. It was hard, son. When I got the black joint, came, and I ain't, when I pulled it out, I ain't put it in the street yet. I said, she ain't ready. I took that shit straight to the motherfucking shop. Rico in Queens. If you know about cars, you can get money. You take that shit to Rico in Queens Boulevard. They put the Adonis rims on it, the gold packers, the tent. Man, that shit came out, man. Niggas was looking at me like, who the fuck is the niggas? George was hitting the floor. We was jumping out. You know what I mean? And then that's when Nut came home. Nut did a little bit, he came home. And when he came home, I picked him up this time. He's like, oh man, take me back, brother. He just took off, man. We ain't never looked back, son. And then what really took us to another level, we was at Studio 54. And none had got shot in the club. And he had a big lawsuit, huh? He got like 700,000. Well, he got shot by a stray bullet? No, yeah, nah. It was in the club, an argument happened over all. And it wasn't even his beef, kid. But the kid was so drunk, 
He said, I'll be back. And he was arguing with some other kids. So another the other kid like, yo, man, don't burn that nigga jump, man. So the other kid was a big little, big kid too. But he had dipped off. And when he had dipped off, he came back to nut. Cause he thought he was arguing with nut. This nigga was drunk as a motherfucker. I'm we all standing right there. They said, what's up now, yo? I was like, what? The fuck you talking to? And when nut was about to smack the nigga or whatever, he was like, I ain't fighting your big ass. And he pulled out. He's like, oh shit. He let one go, boom. And he chased that nut, try to dip him on the bar, and he chased him, boom, boom, boom. Then he dipped. And we looking for nut. He behind the bar, and he got hit in the back. So dude had a hammer in the club, in Studio 54. And hit my boy in the back. Yeah, we don't even know what that was. It was, like, it was like a humble, like, you know what I mean? I don't know what the fuck that came from. It wasn't even for him. He was arguing with someone else. We saw the argument, you know? But then, Two years later, after that, he had a lawsuit, man, 700,000 700, cash. That's when shit went crazy, son. Now, what about the 850 diamonds and that? It was crazy, son. It was crazy. Especially he was getting money already. He was getting money, so it was like, it was a taste of a new taste, man. Like, now we ain't looking back no more. Like, when we go places, we do us, it was like, they know who we were. They know who we were. They know who he was. You know, everyone knew that. You know, whether you loved them or you hate them, you had to respect them. You know, that we still had the LG love was still going. We still had the crew, the homies, the bros. Everyone was still in, in the game. You know, everyone. Everyone was in the race. But then, like I said, in the late '90s, that's when shit got sour. And you know. She just started going left. You know, it started going left. But we still, you know, that's when I fell back from the projects a little bit, you know? I started falling back and staying uptown. And staying in my lane. And staying in New London. And doing what I do. Because so I had the town. I had the town. Anybody tell you that? I had that town. So when the bro got that 700K. When they got that 700K, man, they put eight fifties. Bro, like said, we was hood rich, you know? We was hood rich. Did niggas you know? cop up heavier or niggas ain't even need to cop up heavier? We, of course we were heavier. Of course we did that, but we was up. We was up anyway. But now we all the way up. You know? Like like the the, the, the gold Rolexes turned to platinum Rolexes. You know? Upgrade. You just upgrade it. You know? You upgrade it. You know? Upgrade it. You said <laughs> you said you said nigga went and copped the 850? Yeah, 850, 850. The Range Rovers, 850s. You know, going out. You know, cause they not all the, it's a ladies man. All, 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 all the ladies love that, you know? So you just being around nothing and his presence, bitches don't come. And I had my own lane and I was doing me and I was getting the bitches, you know what I mean? So I was smooth doing my thing, young Puerto Rican Mikey, you know? Whatever coming through fly. And they always, you see nothing, you see me. I ain't too far behind. You see me, that ain't too far behind. You know? So, we was like Batman and Robin, you know? And nothing was Batman, and I was Robin. See, but you got to remember this, lad. Batman needed Robin, you feel me? Facts. Batman, Batman needed Robin. So me and him together was a dynamic duo, you know? That's how we did it. Like, I knew how to calm that down. The nut was a loose cannon. Now, if we was both loose like that, then we would've, we would've, our story would've been over with a long time ago. But I knew how to calm him down. I knew how to just sit down and calm him, pull him. Now, when it's time to turn, we gonna turn. Motherfucking right, we gonna turn. But that's why me and him was like that. That's why me and him was like that. That's why we always had that respect for each other. But the nut was a be, he was a motherfucker, hard head, like a young kid, he was a bully. He was nice with the hands. He wasn't scared to bust his gun. You know, we had a situation in the projects, you know, what people in our projects. That we happen to fight, do this, do that, that, but we end up, you know, squashing it and getting it right, you know, and trying to make it right. A lot of animosity came in the game. And nothing wise had their little situations, you know, which I, I, I tried to resolve, but I couldn't because it was getting too much, you know, it got too crazy. They always had their little situations, you know, which I ain't like. 
and I was cool with both of them. And even though Nut was my man, Wise was my man too, but Nut was my, you know, home base. You know what I mean? That was, that was my, I was vibing with Nut. You know what I mean? But it was just awkward. Like if I was to come around, and you know, as years went by, them two arguing, but but Wise saying was up to me, like it's awkward. You know, it was awkward, man. That's when you know it was awkward. But you know, make a long story short, man. You know that. He just was, he was on a different level than other status, man. He was on a different level, man. We come to, not like the party a lot, so we go out a lot. The tunnel, get up in there, find the bar out. You know, that was, that's what he do. That's what he do. He knew all the industry dudes. You know, they had respect for him. They showed nothing but love for him. You know, we was outside, man. And we was dripped up, iced out. Pulling up, had cribs, you know, we was living. Bitches in every borough. Bronx, Manhattan, Harlem, Queens, Philadelphia. We was traveling, man. We was, we was going around. And then I had my Connecticut. Like I said, that was me. That was me out there. You know, some other kids out there doing that. But, you know what I mean? That was me, you know? And, and we was living, man, hard. Like, you know, and then he had his shit in D.C., in, in VA, Maryland. And when we come together, we come together. The Mike, I need 50,000, man. Come here, I need to handle this. I need 20. He's there, there. Take that, take that. Come back, I get it back. I get him a comeback. Get it here, whatever. Like, that's how we did it. We ain't break bread together, but me and him together, you know what I mean? On that tip, it ain't mixed. But we knew that. But that's when the backstabbing comes, all that other shit, man. You see, you see, Homies killing each other, best friends killing each other. Nah, so we ain't go down that lane. What you mean? Y'all never was, y'all never was getting money off the same drugs. Y'all just was doing y'all separate thing. Yes, I was doing me. He was doing him. If he ever needed me, I got him. If he ever need, if I ever need him, he got him. You that's, know, that's... so I do it before and all that shit. But you know, I take this, fuck money up, do this, do that. I go ahead. Now nah, we not doing that. You know. But we had so much respect and love for each other that we was there for each other. Like if I'm going to read and I got a, I got a, I got a, 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 a situation that got some better numbers, yo homie, what up? I'm going to see this. Give me a buck. Give me, give me two hundred. Give me a buck fifty. I'm putting a buck fifty. We going to see my man. You know what I mean? That's how we do it. Then we get it back. Do it. Bust it down. We go. And like I said, he was a master, master, master guy. So it it shut up to me, do what I gotta do, whatever. If I want extras, I'm whatever, you know. And that's how we do it. And then when we come back, when he come back, and I'm back in town, you back in town, we link. Now we, you know, we good. We get everybody out there good, snap, whatever. Now we coming back. Now we, now we chill. Now we party for a week straight. And we hang in. Then that Sunday night come, I gotta go to CT, bro. I gotta go handle my shit. Let's go. I meet you back. But we stayed in touch every day. We was tuned every day. When we was in New York, we was rocking like that. That was my bro. Like I said, when you seen him, you seen me, man. You know? Every time he got touched, man, every situation we did, I was there. I was always with him. You know? Every time we... He was everywhere, man. When you seen him, you saw me, man. You know? Good, solid dude, man. You know? LG raised some good motherfuckers, man. Well was a good kid, too, man. You know, Will was a real good kid, man. He just, he just, you know, in the early, in the late 90s, man, I don't know what happened, man. Some shit just changed, man. And, and dudes' minds got poisoned, kid. And, and good dudes, man. We was all good, man. Like, him and Nut had a good relationship. Nut and Will, they had a good friendship, man. And Will was getting his money, too, man. You know, Will was getting his money, too, but then just went left, man. And that's the story that you hear with the, with the CNB and all that that's when left. And I wasn't there, like I said, I went up north, and then when I went up north, I went to Harlem. So I can't elaborate all on that. But I can tell you before all that, it was all love, man. And even when that happened, I know it was it was hard and heartful. And after Wise passed away, there was no turning back after that. There was no turning back. There was no trying to fix it no more. And that's when the, you know, 
pain was pain, you know? This is a message to all viewers, all listeners. As I said before, there will be stories on this channel that may be offensive to some, that may be harsh to some, that may be a little bit hurtful to some, and some people are forced to relive these stories in their mind when they don't want to. So let's just keep in mind that when we put these stories together, we're not on here trying to glorify anything. We're not on here trying to glamorize the criminal lifestyle. We're on here documenting actual history and giving people the opportunity to explain to the world how their life went astray and they ended up going down the wrong path. So once again, let's be respectful and let's learn something. I think I was in Clinton, nine four. I was serving a key block and my cell opened. Visit, fuck, oh shit, went down on surprise visit. Cousin was like, yo, have a seat. You wanna cry, let it out. She was like, yo, Peter Rab gone. I cry like a motherfucking baby on the visit. When I, like I said, I was 12, 13 years old, early 80s, 85, 86, doing what I do, and being a badass kid, just being a badass kid, and when we was in our sixth grade of elementary school, everybody more or less graduated and went to our local junior high school, which was 117, all the LG, Notion Avenue, Marcy niggas, Tonkin niggas, that was our school. Me, although I was a little badass kid, I had a little writing skills or whatever, I got accepted to junior high school 113, which was rough child back in the days. That's where all the four green niggas was. So here it is, I'm going to school with all these four green niggas, and I still got to hold it down. So I'm down there being fruit, doing what I do. Now my name is starting to spread outside of LG. So now four green niggas is getting with me. Plenty Hill niggas is getting with me. Niggas is starting to know who I am. You know what I'm saying? Now what you mean? You mean just from like fighting in the school? Just being a badass kid. Running around the school, doing bad shit. Just being a badass kid. So now my name is getting out here. You know what I'm saying? I went to school with Mikey and Mel. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to Mikey. Shout out to Big Mel from um, North Avenue. You know what I'm saying? I went to school with them too. And I was like the little brother to them. So I was the little badass seventh grader while they was there in the eighth grade trying to keep me out of trouble. You know what I'm saying? And I could recall one day we was walking down Myrtle Avenue for Greenside. It's like I said, all these little green niggas know who I am. Not because I'm no notorious killer. I'm just a little badass kid. So they know who the fuck I am and they know I'm a scrap. But Mikey, Mikey was always this little frail motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So, but... Mikey was a little older than me, so Mikey was doing shit I ain't know about. Mikey fucking with nut, who knows the fuck them niggas done did in the street. But one day we walking down fucking Myrtle Avenue and four green niggas rolled on us. So I know some of these niggas, but I'm not understanding what's going on. Because I'm the shorty. And them niggas is like, yo, where home you at? Mikey done dipped off in the motherfucking store. Ain't got no money in his motherfucking body. He in there looking at a menu, try, trying to act like he ordering shit. But these niggas looking for him. So, them niggas is basically like, yo, we want that little nigga. So my son Mel, being the motherfucking OG he was, Mel shut that shit down. Listen, ain't nobody doing nothing to that little nigga, X, Y, Z. Me being me, yo, fuck it, I fight the nigga. Nigga ain't gonna do nothing to Mikey, yeah, I'm gonna fight the nigga. The four green niggas was like, nah, we gonna leave that alone. Good decision, leave that shit alone, you know what I'm saying? But word, I was getting my name known outside the prize just because of junior high school. You know And Mikey was one of them dudes in my projects Who was He wasn't a big dude He wasn't a, a killer He wasn't no hard rock He was just a cool motherfucker but, but, but Mikey 
Might even want to touch some money early. Might use one of them niggas who came out the house wanting to get paper early. And uh, I'm quite sure he could tell you his own story. You know what I'm saying? But I recall when I was sitting on Ragged Salad and I knew I was hearing shit. And that's when I knew things was changing in my hood. Niggas ran down on Mikey. No good. Rest in peace to little Peter Rabb. But he fell in the hands of the wrong niggas and them niggas threw a battery in his back. He threw a gun in Mikey's face. Not knowing Mikey was strapped, Mikey had to throw some shots back at that little nigga, almost put that nigga in his grave or whatever. But that's when I recognized, I was like, yo, niggas threw a gun on Mikey. Like, what the fuck is going on in LG? But I'm sitting on Ragged Sally going through what I'm going through. But that's when I recognized from afar, LG was starting to change. What, what niggas, you mean? He tried to rob son? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know all the particulars. Mikey can give you that shit itself. You know what I'm saying? But I know my little man, Peter Rad, rest in peace. Nicky's put a gun in my little man hand and sent the man Mikey. Little nigga ain't know no better. He ran down on Mikey. He tried to book Mikey, bag Mikey for some jewels and shit or whatever. But he ain't know Mikey was strapped. Mikey threw shots back at that little nigga. You know what I mean? Put that nigga in his place real quick. You know what I mean? Lucky he ain't blow his fucking head off. You know what I'm saying? For listening to niggas doing some dumb shit like that. But when that shit went down, I knew from afar, like, yo, my projects is changing. The fuck? This is now three. Because it was at a time when my whole crew was locked up on the full building and Peter Rabb got bailed down. And he was the only one out there. That's why I say he fell in the hands of the wrong niggas. So Peter Rabb was out in the projects with his head cut off because people's all on the island. And... They just scooped him up, threw a battery in his back, and he did that bullshit to Mikey. Mm. But like I said, that was 9-3. And yeah, that's them I recognized shit was changing in my hood. Shit was changing. I remember when it was never like that. I remember when it was all about niggas sticking together. My LG had a reputation that everybody was in my hood, son. Notion Avenue niggas got roots in LG. Four Green niggas got roots in LG. Brownsville niggas got roots in LG. East New York niggas got roots in LG. If a nigga was in LG, they was in LG for a jam. Cause we got Kane, Biz, and all them niggas rocking four record deals. They wasn't in there for a jam. They was in there running behind boosting bitches. Them bitches big be talking about wrestling peace, biggie. Them coupon bitches. The niggas was in LG chasing behind them. If they wasn't chasing behind them, the niggas was at the dice game. LG was a, a place where everybody wanted to be at one time, son. Everybody. Everybody wanted to be there at one time. I remember those days. I was a young dude, but I just remember, you know, hearing that that project was just always live. It was always live. It was always something going on in there. That's a fact. That's a fact. That's a fact. It was always something going on in LG. Always. Always something going on in LG. Then when that crack shit came, man, and everybody got a taste of that shit, and everybody wanted to start getting money, niggas was shining. Niggas was doing what they do. But to put that shit all in a nutshell, you know, everybody, everybody... Everybody wanna go go to the situation with, 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 with CMB and Wise and Nut and all that dumb shit. That ain't what LG was about, you know what I'm saying? That ain't what LG was about. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. LG wasn't about that. It happened, it was ugly, but that's not what we was about, son. You know what I'm saying? If niggas wanna know what it, what was the history of Wise and Nut, I could tell you what that was. That shit didn't happen because them niggas was two drug dealers and them niggas had a beef. I remember when them niggas was teenagers in Midtown and they had friendly competition in Midtown, son. Them two niggas had a friendly competition that was bubbling. Like when you take a soda can and you shake it up, now you shake a soda can up before it explodes, you open it and it busts. But if you don't, you drop it, it should have bust anyway. Them niggas had a rivalry that stemmed from Midtown, but it was friendly then. You know what I'm saying? You to go to Midtown, take some money. Come back Wise go to Midtown Take some money They compete on How much money Each one of them took It was fun to them niggas back then But then when that shit Came to that drug shit That shit got personal That shit got personal with them Because they Both of them Both of them Both of them died 
in competition with each other. And that shit was crazy, son. It was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking, man. And if it was left to them two, just the two of them, wise and nut, none of that shit would never happen. Them two brothers would still be here today in their fifties, getting plenty of motherfucking money, talking shit about each other, still still trying to outdo each other. That's what them two niggas would be doing today. It was the fucking outside influences who destroyed them two kids, man. It was the outside influences. That's real talk. That's how my personal opinion, man. I wasn't there for that shit, but my heart, my deep heart tells me that's what happened. Outside influences took them niggas away from us, man. Well, rest in peace to both of them. You mean outside influences like outside of LG? No, no, no. Outside influences. You mean just like the people the around them, niggas in a circle. Yeah, not the two of them. Because if it was left for the two of them, if it was left up to the two of them, just the two of them, to beef, fight, and hurt one another, wasn't there one of them niggas gonna kill each other because everybody knew, so the other one was gonna go to jail. Like, they couldn't do that to each other. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That was going on too long. If one of them died, the other one was gonna go to fucking jail. You know what I'm saying? So if it was left to just the two of them, that shit wouldn't have happened like that. It was these outside niggas that cre- that created what happened. That's my personal opinion. I wasn't there, but that's my fucking personal opinion. And the motherfucker can't tell me I can't say what the fuck I want to say. You know what I'm saying? That's how I feel about that shit. Those was two, two of the best that did it in the LG, man. And it's sad how, they, how we lost both of them motherfuckers. <laughs> So on the course of your bid, did you ever run into other LG dudes coming in and out the penitentiary on other bids? While you was on your bid, you ever ran into any of these dudes in the pen? In what regard? Because when I came, when I, like, remember, I was young. So I went away before everybody started going away. You know what I'm saying? Only per, only person in my crew that went away before me was my, my crimey butter. You know what I'm saying? That, me and butter was the best of friends. That was my age going coon. You saw fruit, you saw butter. Now I mean, like while you was up north, did the world come through for a little couple of years, and you seen oh, son? Nah, yeah. nah, 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 nah. At ninety, what, ninety two, ninety three? Remember the whole crew came through the four building. They all came through the four building. I had to set shit straight. Make sure everybody was right. Well, well, rest in peace, my man, Big Belly Man. Hey, he was so mad at me. He was like, yo, man, all them little niggas come through the building. You got to let them niggas go through it. I was like, nah, not on my watch. Them niggas ain't going to be fighting over no motherfucking phones and all that shit. Them niggas going to get the red carpet because that's my people. And that's what it was. But that was the only time I was in locked up with any of them niggas. I ain't running to none of my little crew the whole 23 years. Yeah, yeah I ain't running to none of them. None of them crossed my path. Which was a good thing. Cause them motherfuckers was out there getting caught up in what the fuck they was doing, and I ain't had nothing to do with that shit. I let me leave me be. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Leave me be. Do my motherfucking time. Hey, who was your media circle in LG? Like when I came home in '91 from the Six Building, I had to make a decision. Like, yo, what the fuck I'm gonna do? This Midtown shit don't work no more. Everybody selling drugs. What the fuck I'm gonna do? Why me and Wise was co defendants. I came home from the six building, Wise was still fighting another case. You know what I'm saying? So I come home from the six building, Wise is locked up. World out here doing this one too. At this time, World is a, he's up now. He's up. He up. He, he got a couple of niggas on the block. He's doing what they do. I come home. So he like, yo, what you gonna do? I'm like, yo, I'm gonna post up over here and shake out. So he like, I right, do what you do. What you need me, holler at me. So I'm doing me. But in the midst of me doing me, God bless his soul, Ron K with a grand app, that was my crime. Homie Ron K, little Ron K, the big Ron K. That's the one who died in my project 87. That's the one who screwed nut up. That's big Ron K. May he rest in peace. But it was a little Ron K with a grand app. May he rest in peace as well. 9 1, my boy Peter Rab, God bless his soul. Peter Rab brings Ron K to my crib. Like, yo. K want to talk to you. I'm like, yo, what's good? So K like, yo, I just cussed down. Niggas down there on Grand Ave. They feel some way about me. Niggas are shaking because K was a shooter. K was three, 360 motherfucker. Like, one way, 
One day he this nigga, the next day he that nigga. He was bugged the fuck out. So the Grand Avenue niggas was scared. Of him. So he was like, yo, son, man, you might as well get together and do what we do. All right, fuck it. I start fucking with Ron K. So it's me, Ron K, and my little man Haste and Stack. Rest in peace, Stack a dollar. Three D, we doing what we do. So I fucked with the, with the two of them for about six months. But at the same time, World still doing what he doing the projects. We still in the same crib. We still break night, eat, sleep, shit in the same house. But everybody getting money. They own money. Ain't nobody at the same table. We just a family. So the night that shot was fired and I caught my case, that's who I was fucking with. Ron K and Hasten. Those was my two guys. And yeah, you talking about with, with the, y'all, was, y'all was getting money with the Krills? Yeah, we was getting money in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Early, I told you, I got knocked in Harrisburg. I didn't get arrested for, in New York on my case. I was getting money in Harrisburg. My boy Hedo, Hedo and him was out there. So I fucked around and stumbled on a strip out there. I was in Harrisburg for maybe three months. Shit was nice, quiet. I fucked around and came back to New York. Niggas threw shit in the game, some shit went left. Accidental shooting. I had to go back to Harrisburg on a run. Yeah, that's how that played out. Hey, my, that shit happened out the blue with me, son. I came to New York on a visit. <laughs> you know what I mean? I came to New York on a fucking visit. I accidentally took somebody's fucking life. Who was the first dude that was real close to you that you lost in the streets? <laughs> See, that's, that's, that's the funny thing with us in LG. My generation. We grew up, we watched them over the nigga. You see, I gave you the story of my life and when I came out the house and all that other shit. But you gotta believe it was hitters before me. The generations before me, the niggas from the early 80s and late 70s. You know what I'm saying? The shit goes on. But anyway, I can recall there was never a time in my generation where we took each other's lives. So none of us experienced one of us getting killed. <laughs> we didn't do it to each other. You understand what I'm saying? Mm. I went to prison for my accidental shooting. And when I left the street, none of us had ever killed one another. So I didn't know what that shit felt like. You feel me? Mm. Other than my situation, because I grew up with her too, so she was a friend to me. And I took her life and losing her. I had to go through that But other than going through that I didn't lose any childhood friends in the street Before I was incarcerated But while I was incarcerated The first person that died That it hit me Was when Peter Rabb died Peter Rabb died What? I think I was in Clinton 9-4 I was serving a key block and my cell open visit Fuck oh shit Went down on surprise visit Cousin was like yo Have a seat You wanna cry let it out She was like yo Peter Rab gone I cry like a motherfucking baby On the visit man I cry like a motherfucking baby But other than that was the first person That I felt I lost As, as a childhood friend to the street Peter Rab. And how old was son when he went back to the essence? Oh um, shit! I, w- I was in Clinton. This is ninety four. What was it? The, I'm lying. It was the top of ninety five. I'm lying. It was the top of ninety five. It was the top of ninety five because Pac just came to the building. So this was like I got that this is like early ninety five, and then the first two months of ninety five. So I, in ninety five, I might have turned twenty one, twenty. So Peter Rabb might have been 20 I don't, I don't think he's seen he, he lived to see his 21st birthday I could be wrong But I don't think so And how son died If it can be spoken about Oh well, Peter Rabb got shot Like I said it, Remember I told you He was out there by himself While the whole crew was locked up On Rabb Challenge So he out there He did that dumb shit to Mike But he also was out Out there While niggas was beefing With the niggas on Grand Avenue I remember I told you earlier When I caught my accidental shooting That shit shook my projects And it changed the temperament You know what I'm saying In a nutshell That situation led to a beef With them niggas off of Grand Avenue 
They go for Grand Avenue. Had to, he had the answer to that shit for, for for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna go in all that shit, but it started the bickering some bickering shit. And while I was on Rack and Silent, niggas on Grand Avenue was taking their cheap shots at the crew. You know what I'm saying? So that shit kind of triggered and led to Peter Rad being out there by himself at one time and a nigga from Grand Avenue got up on him. Paralyzed him. He ain't take care of himself. Gang Green led to his untimely demise. Damn, how, how long How long he lived after he got shot? Maybe two years, not even. Cause he got clapped in nine three, he was dead in nine five. And that shit left a bad taste in my mouth too. Like I said, I'm sitting back watching all this shit go down and I'm saying, damn, shit changing out there, man. But I'm bidding, son. And I got a whole road ahead of me. So I couldn't get caught up in all that shit. But I was definitely laying back, hearing and recognizing the change in Lafayette Gardens while I was doing that bid. Shit was definitely changing off there. And how how why they call Son Peter Rab? Rumor has it he was he was born the year he was born he was born on Easter. Mm. That's the rumor. Peter Rab was one of them little lying ass motherfuckers in the LG. You don't know what the fuck he be telling the truth. That was my boy. Yeah, don't walk under his window, son, on a late night. You might get busted in the head with a jar of mayonnaise. And he lived on the 20th floor in this building. He was wild for the night with that shit. Well, he liked to throw shit out his window? Anything and everything he could get his motherfucking hand on, son. Peter Rabbit throw a sink out his window, catch you walking by on a late night with your girl on some dumb shit. That was Peter Rabbit, LG. <laughs> you ain't hear me saying my interview when we was talking, and I was like, shout out to my man, Mick. Yeah, yeah, Mick is from my building. I heard you say that. I know you know Mick. That's family, son. I must, Howard is people. That's people, son. Booby, rest in peace. That was family. Dory and all them niggas. That's family. That's facts. I ain't no use from Howard. That's family, nigga. Yeah, bro. Okay. Yeah, man. I mean, and I know everybody you you just named. Me and I, some of Booby and all them niggas coming through my projects, pulling up on the bikes, jumping off. Yo, where food at? Nick Wise is like, yo, food, who that? That's my cousin Booby. Oh, word. So when Booby and them niggas up in 89, Booby and them niggas coming to my project 6, 7, D, jumping off the bikes, off the trucks. Yo, what up, what up, what up, what that little nigga fool at? So niggas like, yo, fool, who them niggas? I'm like, yo, that's my cousin Booby. Word. And then the bitch to in my project, the Gabbana girl, she was fucking with Nick. Remember, Nick, Nick down your way, he had the gray, he had the motherfucking gray Cherokee with the burgundy rag. That was Boo Bear right hand man. You told my Nicky Barnes from up the hill that, that got Dr. killed. Absolutely, Nicky Barnes, rest in peace. Yeah. He was coming through LG 89 summer while I standing in the new project holding that shit down. That's why I told you 89 summer was real. A lot of niggas was coming through LG, and that was wise spot, son. Nicky Barnes and the niggas coming through. Yo, what up, wise? Wise, like it was popping. Them niggas going through, checking out Tawana, like, you no, know, Nick was getting all that money wherever the fuck he was getting. It. You know what I'm saying? He was, he, but he was coming through LG. His presence was felt, and then them niggas was coming through shouting me out because Boogie was my family. Yeah, son. Yeah, '89 was a hot one. Right now, I'm down here in Charlotte with Mo, son, the nigga Reese. Yeah, I we know. Down, we down here together. Yeah, you know, I got stories on the channel about son and all of that too. I spoke to son. I know y'all niggas is all people. Hey, yo, LAZ, I done told y'all before, they calling this book the Hood Game of Thrones, you heard? It's called The Blood Sagas by Avery Brown. Shout out to the bro, Brooklyn in the building. The bro got major people reading this book and major things about to take place with this book. Make sure you on the right side of history, you heard? LAZ, the Blood Sagas, get at me. It's bad health in these streets, big hammers, all these cameras, mind evolve. 
let's solve death hood full of starred flesh good dudes bark text laws of land hey yo man if you a rapper out there and you got some new music a new video or a new project you trying to push and you need some promo let me make sure the whole country is seeing it you heard dm me at real saint lads on instagram my promo prices is delicious and they start at 100 cash you heard 100 cash i get you buzzing 500 i make you damn near famous get at me